Somebody around you just say, What'd you come for? <laughs> Man, if somebody would ask me that, I said, I come for no other reason. I didn't come to be seen, I didn't come to actually be heard outside the scriptures, but I come to meet with him. My God is as great as he met with us last Wednesday night. I believe I feel the same Holy Ghost here again. It's no telling what great things can happen. Amen. We just come to meet. Well, there is power, power, wonder works in pirate's blood. Burden of sin, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Put you our equal a victory win. There's wonderful power in the blood. There's power, power, what work is part in the blood of the land. From your passionate pride, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. There's power, power, what work in the blood. Jesus, your King, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live, David, his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. Thank you. 
When I think about the Lord, how He saved me, how He raised me, how He filled me with the Holy Ghost, how He healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how He picked me up, turned me around, how He placed my feet on solid ground. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. When I think about the Lord, when I think about my Lord, how He saved me, He raised me, He filled me with His Holy Ghost, He healed me to the uttermost. When I think about my Lord, how He picked me up and turned me around, how He placed my feet on solid ground. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory, all of the honor, all of the praise. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory, and all of the power, and all of the praise. When I think about the Lord, it makes me want to shout. Thank you, Jesus, for you worthy of all of the glory, all of the honor, all of the praise. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for you worthy of all of the glory, all of the honor, all of the praise. When I think about the Lord. Something about the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. Peace in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. The healing in the name of Jesus. Peace in the name of Jesus. Oh, there's something about the name of Jesus. Power, power in the name of Jesus. Peace in the name of Jesus. It makes me want to shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory, all of the honor, all of the praise. It makes me want to shout. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory, and all of the honor, and all of the praise. When I think about the Lord, when I think about my Lord, how he saved me, he raised me, he filled me with his Holy Ghost, he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about my Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory, and all of the honor, and all of the praise. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory, and all of the honor, and all of the praise. 
I want you to do something because I feel like God would want you to do this. We're singing that song when I think about the Lord. You say, well, preacher, what else would it be to think of? Can I tell you that your mind can get distracted awful quickly? And I want her to sing that a little more, but I want you to give yourself your full attention to the Lord himself as you just begin to, every thought, every thought be of Christ now. You begin to thank him what he's already accomplished so long ago as he hung on Calvary's tree that you and I could stand here liberated, born again believing that Christ is our hope, Christ is our help. And I want you to just begin to place your mind upon Jesus right now and think of all the great things that he's done and the great things he desires to do in you and through you. Lift him up here in this parking lot tonight as they sing a little more of that when I think about the Lord. When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, he raised me, he filled me with his Holy Ghost, he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, how he placed my feet on solid ground. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. Seems like all I could see was 
was the struggle Haunted by ghosts that lived in my past Bound up in shackles of all my failures Wondering how long is this gonna last world to sin with no hope that there was no possibility for relief to come to you but all of a sudden you felt another presence enter to the room not just an ordinary person but you felt something supernatural and passed by you and touched your heart and told you you don't have to live defeated. You don't have to be broken and struggling and laden with sin and hopelessness. There's another brokenness that every born again believer knows what I'm talking about. It's when you give your heart over to him, to Christ. Amen. He'll reach way down. No matter how low you went. No matter what sins you partook of. He loved you so much 
that he was willing to die on an old rugged cross and here you are 2,000 years later wondering is there any hope what's going to happen in this world it's getting worse by the day well most of the things we worry about we can't control anyway and that's the very time just allow him to be God and when he comes by and touches you and he makes you of his own sing this song too I have been redeemed by his precious blood atonement was made and paid for your sins that now that he has possession of you and nothing can take you out of his hand if you desire to stay right there I've been redeemed. Oh, I wish I had a singing voice. I've been redeemed. You set me free. So I'll shake off these chains. Well, I'm not who I used to be. Thank you, Jesus. That's why we lift our hands unto Him for what He's already done in the lives of so many. It's a type of just surrender. It's, Lord, I just yield myself to You. It's a form of worship. I put together a A summary years ago why we worship the way we do it's all biblically based if if, if I can come across that might make some copies available it just kind of gives us an idea of why we do the things we do the book of Mark chapter number 16 tonight so good to see you you here tonight, just believe in the Lord. Again, again, this is one of those texts we preach around Easter. Feel the Lord's presence in this parking lot. The governor is supposed to make an announcement tomorrow about phase three. If he does, we'll have an outline of some stuff here for you Sunday. We'll be out here, though, in the parking lot Sunday morning. Mark chapter 16, verse number 1. You got it? Say amen. The Lord's blessed us with a nice evening. Nice little breeze. So appreciative of what he's been doing out here in this parking lot. And possibly up or down the highway. He says, one thing I, I learned a long time ago, just because I can't see them, don't mean they can't see God. Come on, somebody. 
Mark chapter 16, verse number 1. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him or the body of Christ. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre or the grave at the rising of the sun where they had placed the body of Jesus. Verse 3 says, And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the grave? Or the, our Bible says sepulchre. And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And uh, entering into the sepulcher of the grave, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted, or simply afraid. And this young man said unto them, Be not afraid. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you unto Galilee. There shall you see him as he said unto you. And they went out quickly, fled from the grave, for they trembled and were amazed Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Pray with me, Father, we give you glory, praise, and honor. And so often when we read these scriptures, we say for the resurrecting Sunday on Easter. But God, this scripture is good for any day of the week, any service. And we pray that you would bring something alive in the hearts and the minds of the people that's gathered here today. We're careful now to give you all the praise and all the glory. We ask all this in Jesus' wonderful name, and you would say, Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I, I just want to just go through a few things. You've all heard the Easter story. Christ was crucified, died upon a, the cross, and laid his body in a borrowed tomb. And early on the third day, he arose. And I'm sure you probably know that because they were, the, the religious mind was worried about someone stealing his body and claiming that he would rise from the dead. They got the officials to make it certain that they could roll a big stone in front of the mouth of that cave and seal it with an inscription, no one to be around it or trying to manipulate its surrounding. And uh, they tried everything they could. In fact, the scripture said, the official said, go and make it as sure as you can. And uh, but friend, can you understand, we were sure about something when we read that scripture that if Jesus said he would be turned into the hands of angry and sinful men and be killed and be put in a, in a grave, but early on the third day would rise again. You that's got faith here to believe tonight, you said amen to that, and you saw it come to pass. Uh, others would say, no, someone stole his body or something, this happened or that happened. Uh, but it happened exactly the way the Bible said, uh, that the Bible said that uh, an angel that sat upon the mouth of that cave uh, with the two soldiers that was trying their best to guard it uh, fell as dead men at the awe and the magnificence of what they 
they saw. And a shaking took place and the stone was rolled away and out come a very living Jesus. I said he was alive and then he died. But thank God he lives forevermore. Amen. Don't let me get on your bad side, but that's why we don't wear a crucifix. Because a crucifix displays that Jesus is still dead on the cross. But can I say you can put the crucifix away because I guarantee you he's not in a grave anymore. He's on the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I. Because if he's still dead in a grave, we have no salvation. Because it's the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord. Are you Don't throw a rock at me now. Are you still with me? And, and this is just a story of resurrection and hope. This is just a story tonight that uh, that we can see the presence of the Lord, uh, that we can know for an assurity that He is who He said He is, uh, and He's accomplished what He said He came to accomplish. Uh, he could have let us die in our sins. Uh, he could have allowed us to go to hell, uh, but He loved us so much that He looked past our faults, uh, and He saw our need. Hello, somebody. Uh, so you, I just want to take us through the Scriptures briefly tonight on just a small little uh, advancement uh, of kind of what it went on or went down uh, that very early. They say they saw it in very early. Uh, they uh, they uh, had been wanting to do something, uh, but because of the law of that day, they were restricted. Uh, and can I tell you at times uh, that that same, uh, their same restriction that comes into play uh, with you and I here tonight, even Paul, uh, he began to talk about about the law. Now remember, the law is not sin. Uh, the law has been fulfilled through Christ. Uh, but Paul was 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 writing, uh, and he said in Romans chapter seven, verse fourteen, uh, he said, "For we know that the law is spiritual." But Paul said, "But I'm carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not, and for what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, I end up doing." Now, understand it's not like that he, he couldn't stay prayed through every day. He's, he's preaching and teaching that they couldn't be saved under the law. It was impossible to keep the Jewish custom of the law that was fulfilled when Christ came and paid the ultimate sacrifice. Not that the, the Jewish law was sin. It's the Jewish law had been fulfilled. Huh? So he, he went on to say, for then if I, I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. But then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. He says this, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. And basically he was trying to tell the, the Romans at that day that if you're still trying to live for Christ, serving the law or Judaism you will fall every time because it was impossible to keep because you see the law been fulfilled and now grace is supreme so people so Paul was teaching grace and I look back at the scriptures where I read a while ago uh, in the book of Mark and uh, they, they wanted to go to the body of Christ the first moment to anoint the dead body of Christ. Uh, but because there was a law, amen, put in place uh, that they could not uh, do that until the first part of the week because the Sabbath, nobody was to move. You wasn't to carry your bed. Uh, you wasn't to plow a field. Uh, you wasn't to do anything. Uh, but there was a law that was in place. But there I find a different law uh, that when Paul begins to talk about the other uh, law now, as you read on in Romans chapter 7, uh, about the law of the spirit versus the law of flesh. And Paul addressed the Galatian church, the Ephesian church, and so many places uh, about, about this law of sin and death. Uh, so understand this, uh, that you're at times in your life you feel restricted. Uh, at times in your life you feel like uh, something's got you tight or tied up. Uh, that you might feel bound in your mind. Your mind's not thinking clear. You might not be thinking right. The things that you say, oh, I'd never do anymore. 
anymore. You might stumble and fall and find yourself doing those same things. It's because you're still trying to serve the, the, the humanistic nature of understanding or trying to put things in a proper order. Can I tell you, friend, that's not our business. That's God's business. Brother Chris, we would fall every day of our life if we tried to control the outcome of what God desires to do in us. That's why we're the servant, my friend, of the Most High God. It's not about a rule book, but now it's become a holy Bible. It's not about, I don't do it because God told me not to at all. Come on. It's because we love Jesus. Like I've told people before, I'm not, I'm not serving God because I fear hell. I'm serving God because I love Jesus. Come on. And if you serve him for any other reasons, then that right there, your servant will become a form of works and you will never understand the grace that's been bestowed upon you. Yes, Amen. Just making any sense. Yes, Listen now. So they come to that grave when they finally felt a breakthrough that they wasn't restricted as much. And they did not come empty handed. They brought something with them. Listen. They did not come. I didn't come empty handed to church tonight. I didn't come just to, to take from God. I hate them things called leeches. Get off of them bog somewhere. And, and, and things form a suction on you. Try to suck all the blood out of you. Amen. Huh? Well, there was a lot of people followed Jesus the same way. Huh? They only followed him for the fishes and loaves. Huh? What, what can he do for me today? Huh? And how soon they forget what he did for them yesterday. Huh? But when you learn to serve him for who he is, huh? oh, not for what he can give you, huh? but who he is and what he's already accomplished yeah. in your life, huh? he's given you an opportunity for eternal, eternal salvation that you can be with him uh, forever and ever and ever. Amen. Uh, that's why uh, in, in, in the book of John, when he looked at those and told them, uh, unless you eat of this flesh and drink of this blood, meaning taking all of Christ uh, and uh, my God, uh, and they turned around and followed him no more. Why? Uh, because they wasn't willing to do the one thing that said had to be done. That rich young ruler, he ran to Jesus, fell at his knees, called him good master. What must I do to inherit eternal life? That's what he said. Jesus said, okay. Keep the commandments. Oh, I've kept them, Lord. He kept some of them. But you see, living under the law, if you've got to keep one, you've got to keep the rest of them. Come on. But then this is what Jesus told him. He said, go. He's very rich now. Go. Sell what you have. Then give it to the poor. Pick up your cross and follow me. And the Bible said it was too hard for that young man. And he turned and he went away from Christ. I don't know if he ever had another opportunity. But I know one thing. The Lord didn't send the disciples go out there and, and beg him to come back and, and try to bribe him and, and tell him he'll make him some, some big name. And that's one thing the Lord never done was made big names for people. Come on. People has made big names for people. People has put people on, on billboards and, and TV shows and, and, and wrote books about and all that. Listen, huh? but the person that got the book wrote about them was right with God if they wasn't the one wanting to write the book. Come on. Huh? You take a man like Wigglesworth and Jack Coe and, and so many huh? a great men of God that's, that's ran this race before us. Huh? Not one time a man huh, that's sincere with God is looking for all the hype huh? and the and, and in the limelight. Huh? He's already learned. Huh? He stays little and God will raise him up in God's time. Hello. Huh? Friend, I want to tell you, for most parts, preachers have made this thing sideshows and circuses. Huh? They're looking for the limelight. Huh? They want the pats on the back. Huh? They want to be acknowledged. Huh? They want to sit higher than their congregation. Huh? Can I tell you, they might have a house full of people, but they ain't going to have a house full of God with that kind of mentality. That's why John the Baptist knew huh? If he's going to increase, I must decrease. Yes, and if we'll keep ourselves right before the Lord, listen, we begin to see now they didn't come empty handed. Don't ever, don't ever start your day empty handed. Don't always want to be the gimme. Oh God, give me this and give me that. Because the day that the Lord begins to teach you to walk by faith,
When your light bill comes due and you ain't got the finances to pay it. Huh? Come on, uh oh. Huh? Come on. When the, when the children's hungry around the table. Huh? When the husband or the wife loses their job. Huh? And that's where a lot of breaks and runs right then says, Well, I knew God doesn't love me. Huh? If God's got to give you things to, to convince you that He loves you, you've missed the mark. Hello, somebody. Don't you get tight on me. Huh? I'm telling you, you've missed the mark. Huh? If you think God's a Santa Claus, huh? that's got to go around and bless you you with something every day. He's already blessed you with his presence. If you're born again, you have his self. You have his spirit in you. You can walk now with the power and the glory of God. When that, when that, when that bank comes to foreclose on your house, you can get in the altars and pray and begin to believe God that some way, somehow, God's going to make a way where it seems to be no way. I've never been the pastor to part mustaches and, and put a pacifier in somebody's mouth. I want to tell you that 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 that's messed up. That that's messed up, friend. I want to tell you it's faith. These young ladies, they seen him hang on that cross. They seen him die. Okay, they going with something to anoint his body now at the first of the week. <laughs> Glory to God. Even themselves has forgot all the words that their master has told them. I'm going to, I'm going to get... I'm going to die. But on the third day, I'm going to live again. Come on, somebody. In fact, amen. Uh, before he went to Calvary, he went to Lazarus' tomb. Amen. His buddy, his friend, uh, his companion, glory to God that he loved. And he, he fellowshiped at that home. And he heard that Lazarus was very sick. Uh, and they said, Lord, come on. Come on. Let's go lay hands on Lazarus that he will not die. And Jesus stayed at his abode for four days. Uh, Lazarus now has been dead four days. Uh, and the Lord shows up. Uh, and when he shows up, the sisters, Mary and Martha, at different times begin, uh, begin to come in and, and question him. Uh, and one of them said, Lord, uh, if you had only been there. Uh, and he said, don't you know uh, that he's going to live again? Uh, and she said, I know he's going to live again uh, in the resurrection. Uh, and that's when he cleared his throat and said, I am the resurrection. Uh, I am the life. Glory to God. Uh, if you would just come to the those terms tonight. He knows what you're in need of. And sometimes you might fall on hard times, not because he hates you, but because he loves you enough to teach you to walk by faith. Amen. To walk by faith. Look now. We begin to see now that uh, they loved him enough to go to him knowing there would be a big problem awaiting them when they got there. The old proverbial stone took a lot of grown men to roll it in front of the in front of the, the mouth of that cave. Now it's just a few frail women that's coming, but by faith they went on anyhow, and they worried and they not, they're not worried so much, but they wondered what are we gonna do when we get there. But how many knows, friend? The problem was already resolved. Amen. I said, listen, uh, the problem was already resolved. A lot of us will fret and we'll fear and, and we'll doubt. And, and, and we, we might find ourselves staying up all night worrying about something. But if you'll just put it in the hands of God uh, and do your part. Walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. Uh, walk by, by, by the Spirit and not in the flesh. Uh, because remember, there's a warring within your members now. When those things become perilous, when those things become challenging, the first thing we like to do uh, is try to fix it ourselves. Come on. Uh, can I preach just to myself tonight? Uh, but there's things that I encounter in my Christian life uh, that I know that I can't do for myself. Uh, I, 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 come on now. I said, I can't save myself. I can't save nobody else. All I can become is submissive to the Lord that I can be an extension of his hand. We can be a mouthpiece for the Lord. I told a man the other day, I said, you might be the only Bible somebody around you is going to read. 
might not ever come door to, uh, the face in a door of a church, uh, but once they begin to see uh, that you're convinced of something uh, or someone bigger than you that's living in you, uh, you're not the same. Uh, you're not going the same direction. Uh, you're not talking the same language. Uh, there's something different about you. Uh, you might not see it in yourself, uh, but if others see it around you, uh, they'll get inquisitive to say, uh, I know you before, uh, and I know you now. Uh, you got to tell me what's going on in your life, uh, and that'll open the door to say, Jesus. It don't do you not a bit of good just to drive down here to this church just to show up. You got to come with a willingness. Come on, you got to come with a willingness to say, Lord, I just, I give you my heart, my life. I, I pray that you fight my battles. And can I go ahead and tell you by experience, there's sometimes that you're going to feel like he's late. Ha! He got to Lazarus' tomb. They're crying, they're weeping. He wept too because he's a compassionate Lord. And everybody around that hill in their heart believed he was too late. But he never doubted his father. And when he, now watch this, told him to roll that stone back, they said, Lord, he stinketh by now. They didn't have a good embalming plan. It's 120 plus degrees during the day. It's hot. His body's already starting probably to deteriorate. They got him wrapped up tight to keep him from swelling and exploding. But he called out, roll back the stone. Yes, and some of them got together and moved it. And when they did, then he stepped forward and said, Lazarus, come forth. Yes, Glory to God, friend. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. And I want to tell you, Lazarus came forth in grave clothes. Then he told his people, now you unwrap that man. You unwrap that, that, that man, huh? that's, a, that's a sign of death, and that man ain't dead no more. Huh? He's alive. Come on, somebody. They unwound that man. Huh? Oh, my God, somebody. Listen, huh? Jesus himself could have moved that stone by one flick of the finger, huh? by a thought in his, his holy, infinite mind, huh? and that stone would have blew apart. Huh? But I want to tell you, friend, huh? he tries to incorporate us. Huh? But he's not going to beg you. He's not going to plead with you, but he'll be right there to defend you, anoint you, bless you, and help you. If you would just say yes to the Lord, can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. Listen now. So death, or, or, or let me say this, if they would not have continued on their journey, I'm talking about the women back at the tomb of the Lord, they would have never known the intervention of God. I, I, I tell people all the time, don't you quit today. Because tomorrow might have been your breakthrough. Amen. Amen. Ain't nothing on this world can hold a man against his will. Come on. Man, I, listen, I, I'm just a wrong pastor to believe that you've got to have all these programs and, and books and, and, and all these saying this and doing that to be a free man. No siree. You just you fall in love with Christ and surrender your heart to Him. I, I want to tell you, I've watched Him make a lot of bad men good. Come on, huh? not good in Himself, but good in God. Yeah. Amen. Huh? And it ain't nothing greater to see a person born again. <laughs> How can I tell you? I don't know your testimony, but I sure remember mine. I, oh, come on. I said you can go into a place. You can go into a prayer room or somewhere else on the side of the road. My God, in a bean field somewhere, a rank center. But if you can fall on your knees and surrender your heart to God, you get up from there, dust the old bean dust off your knees and leave a saint of God. Come on. Now the, the past is under the blood. Now the, 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 come on, uh, now your old life. I want to tell you, I've been doing this almost 30 years. Uh, there's still people betting me that I'm going to fall to the side and go back to drinking. Uh, I've heard it for, for that many years. Uh, and uh, listen, friend, uh, but can I tell you, when you're dead to that stuff, uh, you don't want to go back. Uh, you want to go ahead. Uh, you want to go ahead. Uh, you Some of you younger people, you're up and down and in and out. Uh, it ain't as hard as you make it out to. You you just got to surrender your whole to Jesus. Yes, hey. Hallelujah. I know some of you don't like me when I preach like this. 
But if you see me in jail, it's because I'm going to minister to somebody. Come on. Yes, sir. You see me in a bar? Woo, God's going to have to burn a bush for me to go in there and get one out of the bar. I'll wait for him on the outside. Yes, sir. But the Holy Ghost ain't scared of a bar. Yes, Watch sir. this now. One of my dear friends in life backslid. He was a, a Pentecostal preacher. He backslid. He got angry at the people as they began to fight and busted the church all up. He was a young Christian. He, he, he was angry. And some of you heard this, but some of you ain't. And uh, he said he loved the Lord, but he was so frustrated. He said, that's it, I quit. I'm not going to read. I'm not going to pray. I'm not. He just had been called to preach even. And he backslid. And he tells this testimony. And I tell it verbatim because he's told it so many, so many times. He said, I'm sitting there on that bar stool. And that country music is a playing. And the whole place is reeked with cigarette smoke. And I got a long neck gripped around that, the, the slender part of that body. And I'm sitting there drinking that. And all of a sudden, I felt the presence bigger than me sit down on the stool right beside me. And I looked, and there was nobody there. But I knew exactly who it was. And the Lord said to me, Michael, why are you here? My God, somebody. He said, I slammed that long neck down. And I began to cry. As I busted through them old bar room doors, I went back to my vehicle. I fell across that steering wheel. And I began to weep, weep and cry and say, Oh, God, if you'll give me one more chance, uh, I'll never be found in a place like this before. What a horrible, horrible, horrible thought uh, that a person will keep coming to a church, a spirit-filled church, uh, and still be so bound to all that junk out there. Can I tell you the problem is a part of the heart that's not been given over to Jesus. I want to tell you, friend, if we'll just surrender all to him, we'll be new. Yes, Glory to God. New. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Yes, you won't look the same. You won't talk the same. You won't act the same. People will recognize you as something very strangely different there will be a power that comes into you that you can help somebody that's out there struggling. Listen, I'm almost done. Most of this I'm telling you wasn't in the notes. <laughs> I'm just feeling the Holy Ghost. Amen. i got to preach what the Holy Ghost says. Listen, some of you, as that wit sin, somebody, somebody's needing a miracle. Somebody's needing their life resurrected. Huh? All the brokenness and shatteredness and all the dreams broken. Huh? Somebody might have destroyed your life. Somebody huh, might have told you you're never going to get out of that pit that you fell in. Huh? Well, can I tell you, God's got a very long arm, my friend. And if you'll cry out to him, huh, he will lift you up. Can you say amen? amen? Hatred and bitterness and jealousy and contention. All these things, Christ, one touch of his glorious hand. Listen now. I'm almost done, but listen. Death, I said death had brought on life, speaking of Christ. And life brought about hope. And hope is our blessed assurance that in this new day, remember it's about the time the sun was coming up, in this new day, there is the possibility of God resurrecting a new chance for change. Yes, sir. You don't hear nothing else I say. The, the sun's gone down now. It's going to get dark. But for somebody on this parking lot, it might be your resurrected moment right here. Yes, Come on. I said... There's a possibility of God resurrecting a new chance for change. Well, that, 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 that man, that woman, they've been like that too many years. They can't change. You got to understand, it's the God that moves in us that changes us. Oh, yeah. For somebody that like to adventure with habits and things, and you say, well, you know what? I'm just going to quit. But you do it on your own, but yet the desire's still there. Uh -huh. yeah. 
Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. The desire's still there. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's just going to take the right company or the right song or the right atmosphere to resurrect that. You, you, you said you, you're crazy. Well, I might be, but I'm crazy for Jesus. Yes, I, I quit drinking before I got saved because I started courting a very sweet lady and she didn't believe in all that drinking business. She believed in that Jesus business and I about destroyed her life before I got right with God. But I, I, I'm probably telling something to her right now and I've probably never told her before, but I dropped her back off on that early date and I went and met my buddy at our hangout at one of them big fancy bars. You know, it's one of them things, if you didn't have a knife or gun, they give you one when you got to the door. And uh, I said, I ain't drinking tonight. All my buddies was there, I said, you doing what? I said, I ain't drinking tonight. I'm trying to do better. Now I was religious. I was going to church, but I wasn't born again. They said, man, $100. It's quarter to 10 right now. By quarter to 11, you are, I said, I'll take your money any day of the week. Come on, somebody. We don't do all this business when we, when we save people now. We don't gamble. But I was just religious. I wasn't saved. Come on now. Are you still out there? Ha. You think I would just... Pull the plug on the store and just let it alone. Come on, somebody. Listen. I said, I'll take your money. But I was in an atmosphere that was playing all my favorite tunes. And the smell of the world and the bar and the liquor and all that stuff mixed. And as that beat of that old ungodly music just pounding it, and your foot's a come on, somebody. Don't you act like you ain't never. Mm, I'll preach online. Amen. But I want to tell you, it wasn't long. I didn't make my full hour. It cost me $100 plus everything else that night. Amen. I failed. Going home that night, I was thinking, why could not I succeed in doing this? And if, if I've never told you the truth about anything, I'm telling you right now, I heard a voice. It might not be an audible voice, but it was a voice that I heard I said because you're trying to do it in yourself uh, he said David uh, if you'll just give me your heart uh, you will never have to be you will never have to be in that environment you won't want to be in that environment uh, you won't talk that environment come on somebody uh, you won't desire that uh, that's why they said old things are passed away uh, behold all things become new is this making any sense uh, and I saw oh, so one day uh, we had an evangelist at our little Baptist Church uh, and Dr. Robert Johnson. I've told this story Milton. I love that man as much as I love anybody on this earth. Uh, why? Because he led me to Christ. Amen. Uh, I was teaching Sunday school. Uh, I was religious. Uh, I knew a few of them old hymns, uh, but I could sure sing, uh, oh, welcome to my jungle, uh, or oh, one of them Guns N' Roses favorite. Uh, hey, ain't it amazing, friend? Uh, oh my God. Now I feel like y'all done got sanctimonious on me. Well, it might have been Merle Haggard for some of you. Huh? Or it might have been the blues. Huh? Or God forbid, but that nasty rap music. Huh? But I want to tell you, my friend, huh? if it ain't holy, huh? if it ain't about Jesus, huh? if it ain't sanctified, huh? throw it down huh? and ask God for the grace and the power. Huh? You are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Yes, Hallelujah. Somebody said, preacher, you want all these folks to keep coming to this church, you better quit preaching messages like that. It's the truth. It's the gospel, friend. I'd much rather get my feelings hurt right now and get me better able to repent by it and through it than to stand before God one day in that big old judgment. And you hear the words, depart from me, you work of iniquity. I never knew you. Come on, there's going to be a lot of, line of preachers right there too, friend. But listen, somebody tonight, how many, how many be honest enough to say, I've had my life broken before. I've had my dreams. I've had my heart busted. I felt like there was no tomorrow. But can I tell you, Jesus, the resurrection and the life. Glory to God. If you're here tonight, maybe this ain't made no sense to you.
You ever heard the expression shooting yourself in your foot? Trust the Lord. Trust Jesus. As He lives, He desires you to live with Him. He'll teach you everything He wants you to know. He'll walk with you every step you make. If you will just learn by faith to trust Him. And when you don't know, you don't go. You just stand still. Because the same Lord, the same God that will walk with you will sit down beside you and comfort you, instruct you, and then when you allow Him to fulfill some things in your life, He'll say, now come on, let's walk some more. Let's walk into another day, another opportunity, another, another chance now to see God be glorified. We get all beat up and we beat ourselves up because we might have stumbled or we might have failed. It's time to put all that under the blood, put it in the past. It's over with now. Forget about it and move on in the perfections of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you do, He will give you the ability and the power through His own glorious Spirit, friend, to walk free in the things of God. We're going to pray. If you need prayer here tonight, if you don't want to come stand here in the middle, pray where you're at. But let the Lord resurrect some old dreams. Let the Lord resurrect your brokenness. Let Him have all that pain. Let Him have the fear and the frustration. Place it in His hand. And if you do, I promise you, He will not leave you nor forsake you. He will be with you every day of your life. Can you believe it tonight? Father, we give you glory and praise and honor all that you're doing, all that you're going to continue to do now, Lord. You're the only evidence we need to know that our future can be secure. Touch every need. Any tonight. The on the scales of this life. Weigh them in the balance. Present your love, grace, and mercy. Your convicting power. Your glorious hand. Father, we give you praise now. Not only what you've done, but what you're doing and what you're going to continue to do. Come on, church, let's pray.